correspondence? Uh, we have one correspondence tonight from the mayor's office. Uh, it was a letter to Bucky Simpson and that he had just returned from Washington, D.C. and uh, on an honor flight, and we just wanted to put that in the record. Received and filed. That is all for correspondence. For the good of the city, anyone would like to address this council, please step forward. Okay, reports of department heads, fire chief. I have nothing to see them. Any questions? <clears throat> questions for the fire chief? Thank you, fire chief. Uh, Chris, Superintendent Parks. Good evening. I have quite a few things here that uh, you guys will be voting on tonight, so I want to cover a few of them. Uh, one, you're going to see there's uh, increases with camp fees. Uh, our sports camp has been at $70 a week, which is probably about $100 cheaper than anybody else a week uh, since the minimum wage was $4.75. Not to mention our insurance going up and also the busing for the pool. So uh, our rec commission has approved a, a $20 increase, which would make camp $90 a week, which is still about $80 to $90 cheaper than most of the surrounding public and private camps around us. So that is one of our incre one of the things you'll be voting on here tonight, hopefully. Uh, you also see there's going to be a transfer of some money. We are looking with some money that we did not use for repairs to pools and things to actually start replacing some of our swing sets that are built in the 19s, put in in the 1970s. So that's what those transfers are for. I think we'll have enough money to actually put in three. We we're looking at two, but I think we'll be able to put it in three different parks, uh, one being Davidge that has no swings at all right now. Um, another one is I've, I would like to put two non-voting youth delegates on the Recreation Commission. Uh, what that does, it, giving youth a voice is great for funding opportunities. They really look for that. Uh, not to mention it's just positive youth development and empowering our kids. We have a lot of teenagers doing a lot of great things. And I think they should have a little bit of input and let them learn the government process. And we, we can make a nice big deal about it. We can have people uh, introduce you to them and get a couple members to be on the commission. Uh, the last thing is uh, I think I told you we received the 2016 funding for the Orange County Youth Bureau. Um, we'll be receiving 44000 There's a resolution on there for 49000 The police department also wrote a grant, Officer Jackie Welch, and they, they're receiving $5,000 to start a new program that's called Too Good for Violence and Too Good for Drugs. Uh, that will also be working together with Middletown Cares and some funding and collaboration happening there. So there's some, some good things happening working together right there. Uh, just to hit a few programs quickly, uh, the Letters to the North Pole started on the 23rd, and holy cow, there are letters coming in. Uh, everybody, we're getting tons of compliments about the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to give a shout out to uh, Sean Reeser and the guys in the Parks Department that built those wonderful things. And they had a great time delivering it. And uh, Santa Claus even helped deliver it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, just for December, with the holidays coming up, we have a lot of special events. And I just want to be able to mention them quick for the public. Friday, December 18th at 6 o'clock in Festival Square. We'll be caroling, so the Jingle Joggers, and they can go around to businesses in the downtown. So that's 6 o'clock on Friday the 18th. On Saturday, December 19th, from 11 to 1 at the Recreation Center will be Santa's workshop, where kids will have the opportunity to do crafts, um, give, have a story read to them, and I, I think there's a special guest coming as well. And then on Monday, December 21st, at 6 p.m. at the Paramount Theater, uh, there'll be the showing of the Polar Express. There is no school the next day, so it's a it's a great opportunity for the kids to start their vacation uh, break with the Polar Express. Tickets will be five dollars. Uh, the doors will open at five o'clock, and the only people that can pre-buy tickets is if you have a group of over ten. You can get group sales at the Paramount beforehand, uh, starting today, basically. But otherwise, sales will just be at the door. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of these programs. Uh, give the recreation a call. Our number is 346-4180. Uh, we also had our first annual youth turkey trot, and it was a huge success. 
and I'd like to thank the high school track team uh, for the donation of their time and their knowledge, and also for ShopRite for the donation of all the turkeys that went out to the winners. Uh, the kids really had a great time. And the last thing I have is our kids are doing great things. Tomorrow night, the Orange County Youth Bureau holds a youth summit. There is going to be a lot of Middletown kids there. Uh, you have to be invited to this. We'll have representatives from the Mayor's Youth Council. We'll have representatives from SAD, which is Students Against Destructive Decisions, which is funded by the Middletown Cares. Uh, we'll have students from the Teen Center. They have been asked to come to share because our numbers are so big there. And we'll have students from our Summer Leadership Academy talking about their experiences. So Middletown's on the map in the county, that's for sure, and positive things are happening. So is there any questions? Paul McCliner. Um, I just wanted to say that with the youth delegates to the uh, Recreation Commission, it's, it's not just the youth delegates that will benefit. It's the commission and the people because I think their opinions would be really valuable to have. And sometimes they think of things that we don't think of. They absolutely do. Thank you. All in what? Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you uh, bringing to us the increase in the program prices. I, I do think that it's, it's warranted. And, and, but for people who may have a problem with it or may not understand exactly what they're getting for that, can you speak on the quality of the instruction and the coaches that we have and some of the opportunities for the counselors? Oh, absolutely. Um, our coaches at the sports camp, um, they're all high school coaches. So they all come certified by New York State. Um, they also are all trained in CPR and first aid. I mean, we had a medical emergency there a few years ago where actually we had a child stop breathing from a seizure. Uh, that child is, is fine. And the health department, when they came to do the report, they said they can only think of one other camp where that child would have still been alive today. So that's one of them. Also, the counselors that work with these coaches, they are Middletown students or alumni. They're usually college athletes or college-bound athletes. So you're, you're really getting... I mean, great, great programming. And the kids get to choose what they want to do. It's not that they have to go do something. It's a very popular camp. And we'll also raise the, freeze, the fees with spring break as well as little people. They'll be less, though. They'll only be like $15. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Don, treasurer. specific except uh, I know you're going to be voting on the budget tonight and I, I hope you support it and I know the mayor is going to go over it in detail thank you any question for Don thank you John great job <clears throat> John just to remind the public about how we sell easy pass at the uh, clerk's office and we're doing a phenomenal job and we sold over 200 so far and, uh, and all the information is on the website and that's had over 1500 hits just for that and speaking about hits on the website our number one is the garbage and recycling schedule which has had over 61,000 hits on it which is phenomenal and the second one is the directions to City Hall which is 37,000 hits which is interesting too and the third one is the state of the city by the mayor of over, over 15,000 hits so and then the third one is collecting uh, yard waste which is like over 10,000 hits but a uh, lot of information on the website and please uh, visit it it's uh, middletown-ny.com thank you that's all I have okay any questions for John uh, tonight we have our county legislator Jeff Berkman like to say anything Thank you, and good evening. Good evening. I thought I'd give you a quick report of what's going on with the county budget. We have our budget approval process, which is going to take place on Thursday. Uh, it's a 725, approximately $725 million budget, which is just about $10 million less uh, reduced from last year. Uh, the good news is that uh, the sales tax rate re stays the same. In Middletown, as you all know, the three cities get a favorable distribution of sales tax, uh, not because the county is particularly generous, but because the state gives uh, the cities the option of doing it on your own if you wanted to. So that strengthens the mayor's hand in negotiations. So uh, happily, we have a, uh, an agreement which is favorable to Middletown and Newburgh. So uh, also on the property tax, component if the res if the budget passes as the county executive has 
submitted and we've done some moderate changes. Uh, Middletown actually gets a small tax property tax cut of 2.79%. It's because of the equalization rate, but it's certainly good news to Middletown homeowners and property tax payers. So that's, uh, that's one thing I wanted to mention. Next, uh, Heritage Trail. A lot of talk about the Heritage Trail. Uh, that seems to be moving along in a favorable direction as well. The entire project is uh, funded in the capital budget, which is certainly good news. And I have a, uh, a long-standing record of voting against the capital budget. This may be the incentive for me to <laughs> have a more positive <laughs> view. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's it's certainly good news, and uh, and we're looking forward to have that uh, moving forward. And the county executive seems to be uh, an advocate of fully funding it, and then seeking reimbursement from state grants in the future, which is outstanding. Let's just hope this happens. On the local front, I uh, believe that the mayor is about done with Corporation Council and, and the rest of the county attorneys about getting the intermunicipal agreement set about the small uh, issues of easements and uh, a couple of technicalities along the path of the trail that have to be resolved. Um, sparkling devices. We went through quite a, uh, an episode last 4th of July. And Middletown and New Windsor seemed to be the two communities that had the most, uh, m m many problems, we'll say. Uh, it was, people had the wrong idea, I think, about the whole, uh, about what was legal and what wasn't, led to confusion and, and abuse. And uh, I put forward two resolutions. First, to rescind that which the county approved. Uh, I kind of went in knowing that that was a long shot and it didn't pass. It didn't have a lot of support. Even New Windsor, for some reason, wanted to give this current law more of an opportunity to see if it could straighten itself out. So I went for the next be best option was calling for a state law, which would give us that which we thought we had in the first place, which was an opt-out provision for the small cities. And that passed in two committees. I authored it. I'm happy that it's moving forward, and that will be voted on on Thursday as well. So that's in the right direction as well. And then one other, one other modest piece of small news I'll say is uh, uh, an additional $50,000 allocation was put in. Uh, actually, some of you and the mayor and I it, and Jerry, of course, was the guy who initially set up the committee uh, to talk about the homeless services and the warming station and various issues that are corresponding with that with that issue. So I put in a resolution for a budget amendment actually for fifty thousand dollars to do additional work and it's countywide to do some assisting and and help for other communities that want to set up home uh, warming stations and also to get a database of those people that are most in need in our community. So we find out exactly who they are and what they need, and that might help all policymakers in the future determining how we can integrate some of these people into existing programs and uh, be an improvement for the quality of life of certainly those people in need, but for the rest of us as well. So I was very happy that uh, $50,000 was added, and that gives enough uh, money, hopefully, for at least a part-time worker to befriend those in need and to try to uh, do some positive work for our community. So it was an honor to serve the people of Middletown, yet for one more year in the county legislature. This year was a bit easier than last year. Last year was a huge financial crunch, not that things are solved completely, but it's not quite the pressure that there was last year. So that's why we could have some additional movement on the budget for the 50,000 and other issues. Just lastly, as an aside, today I went to a reactivated foreign um, FTZ, foreign trade zone, which we had and uh, county executive reestablished. And 
I met with him a few weeks ago asking for him to do that, so happily he did just that. And now we're uh, trying to get business in the international arena uh, to Orange County. And, of course, Middletown will be in my heart and in my mind, as it will be with all of you, I'm sure. So if anybody has any other questions now or later or home, whatever, I'll be happy to Alder talk Kleiner. with you. Um, it's just first, uh, thank you for working for Middletown and particularly for that $50,000 that should really help. Um, I have a, a question on the uh, sparkling opt-out. The, the county is passing that saying that they're asking the state to allow them to do that. The, you know, they're giving us permission to do it if the state allows it. Is that how it works? Yeah. Initially, when it came to a vote, there was some confusion. Well, the confusion was right after the vote. We were uh, informed that that if the county were to pass the resolution, which did pass, that there was a pre-existing authority of the three cities of Orange County to opt out. It was on that basis that it was voted upon. That was what we were under the impression. After speaking with the mayor, I remember going back and forth with him. His impression was otherwise, and as it turns out, he was right and legislative council for the city was right so then we're left with the situation that there was not an opt-out for the cities so then okay well what do we do about it so i went first to try to rescind the entire resolution to start all over again but uh but that they just there wasn't support for that so the next thing next best thing is to encourage our uh, representatives in albany to give Middletown, Newburgh, and Port Jervis, the authority, and any other small city in the state if, they, if, it's, if it helps in passing this resolution. But perhaps uh, I'll leave re re copies of the resolution. I think I even emailed it to uh, Mr. Rodriguez and the mayor in the past, and I'll make sure that Mr. Numchuk gets copies of all this, and perhaps your committees would uh, go over it and write a letter of support for it. Thank you. Sure. Johnson? Um, could you just reiterate with the Heritage Trail, what are the, what's the real dollar expenditure for the project at this time, and from whence do those dollars come? Yeah, well, there was an additional $2 million that somehow came in. Went from 10 to 12 I believe. Okay. And when I asked about that, uh, I got, a, uh, I got a, dis a discussion happened about <laughs> the price of uh, blacktop. Okay. And... Uh, so that's the current estimate is 12. 12. However, uh, it, we won't really know the actual cost until it goes out for bidding right. and it's actually sorted out. So, so we don't have the pressure of the moment to have the exact figure because it's a, a budgeted estimate. And at that point, we can determine whether uh, that holds or whether it's a reduced amount. Also, also, it also leaves the authority, by the way, for the bonding as all bonding with the office of the county executive so the ball w once it passes the ball would be in his court to determine how much would be bonded if he feels that he could do it for a substantial less amount of money then no doubt he would bond less money because that would be in the best interest of all the taxpayers of orange county and the county is anticipating covering what percent of that cost at well, the, the county, the way I understand it, it's uh, the, the county executive has offered, along with others in the county government, to front the money, basically. Uh, 100%, 90%. Should I stop asking questions? No, I'm okay. just saying that it's <laughs> my understanding understand that it. the entire project is contemplating being uh, handled and that the Great. county then would... We look to be reimbursed for the state and federal funds. Great. 8020? 8020 than the IDA, but there's more involved with IDA. Okay. But uh, the exact costs will happen when they get the, uh, right. the, the is, bidding. And it, it's, on. quite frankly, uh, Alderman, it's, it, we're in better, a better situation more receptivity towards cooperation from the county for the funding of the project than I initially uh, thought would actually happen. I thought they were going to, well, I don't want to, I can tell you what I thought might, could have happened, but didn't. Okay. And well, thank been, you for your efforts uh, on that. Still would have been a victory, but not as good as this one appears to be shaping up to be. Great. Thank you. Alderman Massey. 
Jeff, do you know how much money has been expended on that project already? You know, it's funny. I, I, I don't know exactly, uh, and it's difficult to determine because there's been uh, monies that ex have been expended by the county, money that has been expended to by, by uh, trail advocates that were actually in charge of the project at one point. Uh, some of the money went for other segments of the trail that have not been distinguished from our segment of the trail. So I don't have an exact amount of how much was spent on behalf of the par our portion of the trail to go forward. W would a million dollars seem like a lot? A million dollars sounds like a lot that, to me. That, I understand that that amount of money has been for this portion. And if by some chance the county doesn't approve it and we don't get it, that that million is lost. I mean, I, that's, that's my belief and I think the uh, Commissioner of Public Works is shaking his head up and down, yes and no. I mean, yes, rather than no. Well, so I, think I, I guess what I want people to understand that we're hoping, uh, obviously, from Middletown standpoint, we want it, and we just don't understand why we would not get that, especially if up to a million dollars is going to be lost, and it's only going to cost another million well, it's going to be multiple millions to complete the project. But it's going to be reimbursed. A lot of it. All right. And, so and we, like, we stand to lose a million dollars, or not Middletown, but the project stands to lose a million dollars if it goes down the tubes. I'm not envisioning this not happening. I'm envisioning this happening. And let me say I was kind of blunt about it at the committee meetings where I was repeated. I didn't really think I had to do this for you because we're on the same team here uh but i let's say reminded in a in a forceful, forceful yeah, a polite but forceful way uh that uh that they have made commitments to the people of middletown and wallkill to uh make sure that the trail would continue from uh, hartley road to Middletown, through Middletown, and out to Howells. And that's been the pledge, the promise that has been made to us repeatedly. And then it's our, uh, not only our duty, but it's our, it's our job and, and uh, commitment to make sure that the county does just that. And I, and I believe that the right recipe is there for this to move forward. And I appreciate your being there for us and helping us out, but we've heard this story a long time and we get a little concerned well, I mean skip the emotions of it now it becomes a financial a million yeah, well, dollars is out there that stands to be lost if they don't do it when it only take another million to do it uh, it's not going to take just another million to do it it's going to no, no, take I, multiple I, millions even for our, even for our that, even but you're going to get section. reimbursed the other millions we stand to lose a million dollars from what I understand I, I, I don't well we've got a man behind you that uh, well, seems to know more you're, no, I'm you're, on this topic. You seem right, when I you, said it. You you're, seem, you're assuming that they're not going to go forward. And, and no, this. I want it to go forward. Uh, well, so I don't want to forecast what we're would happen. We're all on if the same page, and we're all for it. And hopefully, it'll pass. We'll fly in colors, and we'll have it soon. Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a a positive direction we're going in. I don't want to uh, jinx it. I don't want to be anything other than twenty positive. years. Well, there's other stuff too, oh, like the Christ. the fact that. It, it's it's been see the other part of the trail was on county owned property this segment of the trail is on city owned property so that makes a, a distinct difference it also brings up questions of liability brings up questions of underground piping it brings into questions of trans is there anything we in middletown can do to help you well i've talked to the mayor about it yeah so you could pass your intermunicipal agreement that would be helpful all right I yes. Honestly, you're implying that there's some reluctance on the city to pass. Not at all. I think uh, not at all. I think the city's been totally supportive of this, and I okay. think I have too. Yeah, I can clarify from yeah. the city's point. Of view. Alderman Kleiner, and then and then we're we're done. I, I I just wanted to say that you know the county did pass that 1.2 million dollars a few years back, and and a lot of that has been for the design and engineering of the right. trail. So it's not that nothing's been done. It's there's been a lot of work 
been done and now it was originally through planning and now it's through rich roads and parks but they are spending money and so that money's you could say it's lost if it gets designed and doesn't get built right. but i mean it's right. not that the money's not being used right. and and we have great faith that it's going to get built yeah i think that uh, it would be unconscionable for the county to to renege on its word to us and i think that uh, we'll mobilize to uh, to avoid that possibility, but I, I have uh, an optimistic feeling that we're moving together, the county and the city, uh, and the town for that matter, to, uh, to get this important job done. Thank you, Mr. Bergman. Sure, thanks. Mayor? Yeah, I wanna uh, begin by thanking Jeff for the, for the report and also um, uh, thank him for his work that he's done on the Heritage Trail. I know he's being a little cautious with his words because there was a lot of um, um, doubt last year on whether this project would move forward. But um, when the county executive was in town for the Clemson opening, as you know, he reinforces support for the project. He has also had made many statements and made public statements um, in support of. Uh, myself and Maria had the opportunity to attend the Orange County IDA meeting um, a few weeks back in which the county executive was there um, making a pitch on behalf of the county for the Middletown project to have some of that 20% of county funding funded by the IDA. So uh, Mr. Newhouse is on board. I believe, as Jeff has stated, that uh, the feeling on the legislature is much more positive, and we're, um, we're really moving, um, moving ahead on it. And it also affects Way Wayanda, by the way. So it comes in from Goshen, Way Wayanda, uh, Walk Hill, Middletown, and back out to Walk Hill. So it's, it's a great project. We're all on the same page. It's a, um, um, I, I think the adjustments uh, for the, from the 10 million to 12 million are because of possible design requirements by whether it's going to be a year round trail or uh, and required to have a deeper base and deeper black asphalt. But whatever it is, the most positive news I think that Jeff reported. And, and the county exec told me at the IDA meeting was that he would be putting it into his budget, into the capital budget for the entire amount. The county would then seek the reimbursements. 80% is funded through the Transportation Council. Myself and Jacob attended a meeting um, um, about a week or so ago with the, uh, the Orange County Transportation Council. The county executive was there again, reinforced his support for the project, and the Transportation Council did fund the, and it's in the three-year or four-year plan, uh, uh, you know, the funding mechanisms, how the money's going to be drawn. So all the stars are lining up correctly for the Heritage Trail to happen. And um, I want to thank not only, not only Jeff, but also uh, the county executive for his leadership on this because they did hit a little, little rough road. So he has, apparently the boat is straight and let's keep it straight. Um, just wanted to touch on the sparkling device issue too. Um, the county can opt out, and, and, and I know Jeff introduced the resolution. It didn't pass. I don't understand the reluctance of the legislature to do it, but it's their call. The, and then each individual municipality can opt in. So we're requesting the state allow us to opt out. Hopefully um, that will happen, but um, uh, if it doesn't, uh, we're going to have a repeat probably of uh, 2000, um, you know, July 4th, 2004, or 15. But um, also just be aware that this year, this coming New Year's, people are allowed to do the same thing for that last week of the year. So um, it, it's maybe not so much of a concern um, during the winter months, but we can anticipate it. So we'll have to do as Jeff suggested, is lobby our state legislators allowing for that local opt-out um, if the county opted in. So um, we had our annual Christmas tree lighting ceremony this past Friday and probably the best turnout that we've ever had. Um, I would be remiss in mentioning that Miguel Rodriguez, chairman or council president, out of his own pocket purchased all 1,000 candy canes that were handed out. And um, uh, he wanted me to make sure that I mentioned that, by the way. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Uh, out of the goodness of his heart, his wife Wendy delivered them. And but the event was a great event. Uh, we had about 5,000 people um, that was estimated to attend. Um, our first honorary chairman 
Andrew Stevens. Um, as you know, many of you saw him that night. He was out of the hospital, I think, the day before, uh, suffering from a, a very serious rare uh, uh, muscle cancer, uh, sarcoma. And, and um, Andrew was able to make it, and the next day he went back into uh, the hospital for treatment. And uh, so uh, between the weather and Andrew, it probably made it the best event that we've ever had. So our best wishes go out to Andrew and, 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 um, and his family for the, for the holiday season. I uh, also want to thank the, the Levi family for the donation of the tree. This is our second tree off of Amy Lane in the town of Walk Hill. So we want to let Dan DePew know that we're going to come out and raid him again, maybe next year for another tree. But um, um, I, I think everyone had a great time. I want to thank the uh, bid district, John Degnan, and the Economic Development Director, Maria Bruni, and all their staff people and volunteers uh, for making that happen. Tonight, uh, I also want to let you know that the capital budget requests are in. We'll try distributing them to you. We're going to go through the same process that we did with the general budget, general fund budget, and operate and water and sewer budgets. There'll be a discussion at the Board of Estimate. <coughs> and then we'll be making recommendations to the full council. Another important note is that we've been advised by um, a few months back by the Board of Elections that we need to do redistricting in the city of Middletown. Alderman Massey and, and myself and, and uh, President Rodriguez have been working on some preliminary plans, but they've asked us now um, uh, to move the date of presentation from January up till mid-December. So we're going to start moving very quickly. Um, it's going to affect third and fourth wards because and first ward. Um, the fourth ward, as you know, is huge. With in, in the distribution, the ward boundaries are set by population of registered voters. So it's not by population, but it's by the registered voters. So the for voting purposes in the election districts. So um, we're going to be looking at, um, hopefully this week, on some different options. And it's going to require probably movement from the fourth ward of voters and in, in putting them into the first ward and into the third ward in, in some parts because you're contiguous with the um, fourth ward being sandwiched by the two of them. But if we don't do it and adopt fairly soon, the Board of Elections will do it for us. And I think we would rather have the input of doing it rather than have the Board of Elections make those decisions. So um, we're going to hopefully set up a meeting. I'll, I'll let everyone know, and we'll uh, certainly get, to get your input on, on some of the decisions uh, that will be recommended. Um, also, uh, tonight we have, we'll be voting on the um, city budget. And as you see on the screen, Eileen, can you put it up? Uh, you do have it up. It's the uh, budget highlights. And all we're doing is budget highlights tonight. We've had our public hearing at 6 o'clock. Uh, no one from the public showed. Um, we had uh, uh, Chief Barone and Chief Lewis from the fire department and a reporter, Dick Bain, from the Times Hill Record. Uh, hopefully that's a sign of people who are happy with the budget as being um, presented. We did have um, several weeks of work um, with our treasurer, Don Paris, working with the Board of Estimate and, and the department heads. And we're happy to announce that we are staying within the tax cap once again which will make Middletown residents eligible for the tax refund. But um, we wanted to go briefly and go to page one, if you could, which shows the uh, 2016 budget highlights. And what it shows is the 15 spending and the 2016 recommended budget. And this is in 1,000. For our general operations in 15, you see we had $6,594,000. And in 2016, it's $6,774,000. The special items line is liability insurance, claims, tax certiorarys, and you'll see there's a, a slight decline in that line down to $1,082,000. Personal services, um, which includes um, um, it's payroll, basically, for all different departments, we had $15,471,000. And uh, the 2016 number is $15,659,000. The employee benefits line, this is the um, health care, pensions. Um, a very large part of our budget is going up probably the most significant part from 12 million six sixty one to 13 million oh fourteen, And our debt service payment is actually going down just slightly which is a result of some of the um, 
uh, re the use of the debt, debt service fund balance. Um, the next page, we go on to some of the selected fixed costs just to highlight what the cost of government is. <coughs> Our insurance is down from uh, up from 846000 and this is all general fund, not water and sewer, to $854,000. Our street lighting costs are $438,015, almost a half a million dollars in 16, $486,000. This is being addressed in our shared services and our discussions with ESG, where the, the state has recently passed a law allowing municipalities to take over street lighting operations. And we're projecting um, between street lighting and water meters, and this is a whole separate project, a $15.4 million savings over a 15-year period. But you'll be getting all of that information for, and that's all guaranteed savings, by the way, through this program of New York State. So you'll start seeing this number come down significantly in, in the years. But when I tell people we spend almost a half a million dollars just to, for our streetlights, they, they don't believe it. But as you can see, it's, it's a real number. Our gas and oil went down from 452 to 385, primarily the cost of gas. Uh, repairs and equipment, we had a slight increase from 533,000 to 584,000. And our landfill, is going up, and these are landfill costs for dumping your garbage, from uh, $1,068,000, that's just to put the garbage at the, to the landfill and uh, pay for the trucking, to $1,143,000. As you saw in my comment in the paper this year, um, we're going to have to focus on a few areas in the budget that need to be cut. Um, I touched on the lighting and in uh, the ESG project. Landfill is another area that we need to do something. Um, our recycling rates are horrible. I've been saying it for a few years. They're actually horrible, still maintaining about 6%. So uh, part of our plan for um, uh, sanitation, and we're looking at every possibility. I know Mr. Massey is a supporter of the privatization. Uh, there could potentially be a significant savings. I've talked about the use of the automatic arm, but regardless, it's the any component that we do is going to require us to do a better job at recycling. And if we don't, uh, that number is going to continue to climb regardless of uh, no matter what we do and, and how we pick up the garbage. So uh, uh, we, we do have um, a lot of work to do on uh, the sanitation issue for 2016. Uh, the next page is the employee benefits and the cost of operating a small city of 28,000 people. And the, as you can see, the breakdowns are the pension costs, the workman's comp, health insurance, and payroll taxes and other miscellaneous costs related uh, to payroll. And if you look at the number in the bottom, 34.18% of our budget is employee benefits. So um, uh, we want to make sure that our employees have all the benefits they deserve. Um, it's not a, it's not an issue with the employees receiving the benefits. It's just the cost of the benefits. So we, we need to highlight that as we move forward is that um, that you know there are a large portion of this budget goes towards this one specific fixed cost and there's nothing we nothing we can do about that because we're fixed and tied in on our health insurance. Um, we've talked about looking at workman's comp, uh, going self-insurance. Uh, so far, the experts that we've had have not been able to figure out a viable um, pathway to self-insurance that would make it profitable for us. We're still looking at different options with that. Pension costs are set by the state. So um, uh, it's a big number um, for a small community like Middletown. 2016 over 13 million dollars and the last page which is the um, the non-repetitive revenues and this is the danger that communities can get in and I've been cautioning for a couple of years now that uh, we've had a healthy fund balance in all of our accounts we've also um, fund balance being our our savings we've also had the benefit uh, the beneficiary of uh, many projects that have come in under budget for over the years, projects that have been bonded. 
So if you look at the top of the page, we are going to be using six hundred thousand dollars of that, or six hundred thousand dollars of that savings um, for the debt service fund balance. These are projects that money was borrowed from that the projects primarily came in under budget. The second is sale of real property. We've identified at least one major piece of property that we will be selling, and uh, we will, we are setting a minimum bid actually higher than the budgeted amount to be conservative. Hopefully, the minimum bid will go through. But uh, And then the third part is our fund balance transfer, which rounded up to $299,000. So that's $1.4 million, one, almost $1.5 million in non-repetitive revenue that we need to address, and that's going to be addressed through the, um, the ESG program that I talked about on the short term and along with some changes in sanitation. So that's our, our budget for the um, general fund for 2016, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Mr. Mass. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, <clears throat> if we did not have those three items there, what do you envision the, uh, I think we actually have a dollar amount. We do. Okay. It well, would be about uh, the, the non-repetitive tax, uh, the non-repetitive revenues represent 8.3% in taxes. So uh, if, we, if we were going to raise taxes to cover that amount, it would result in 8.3% uh, tax increase additional. So you see the significance of having to make some structural change on how we do business. Now, a lot of people talk about the tax cap. And you know we're not required by law to stay within a tax cap. We're required by our conscience and our, and our desire to do what's right for the community. I actually am one of the few mayors in the state that agree with Governor Cuomo regarding the tax cap. I think it saved us and re it, it made us think about different ways of providing services. And the one, um, the best example and the example I gave to the state was the change from the hook and ladder truck that required two people to operate to the single um, axle truck, which requires one fireman to operate and drive. And that save, that one decision alone, and it was made because of the tax cap coming in, is saving Middletown residents between four and five hundred thousand dollars a year in spending. Just that one decision alone, and I think that's what the governor's trying to do. He's trying to get us to look at how we do sanitation. He's trying to get us to do shared services. We did hire um, Pattern for Progress to meet with the local school district and some of the surrounding communities. We're not having a lot of success in shared services in that area, but we are having some. But um, the state government and, and Governor Cuomo's intent was to make communities make hard decisions, and that's what we're doing in this budget. Thank you. Any other questions? None. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we're Marshal Alderman, Alderman Massey. I just have one, and only because I see that uh, Commissioner Twill is back now, and I know he didn't have an opportunity to speak. Uh, I am going to speak on just one one item, and, and Jacob, you certainly, uh, it's the final resolution we have tonight, and I know that there was quite a bit of discussion on it uh, at the last meeting, and it's the uh, uh, transfer of funds our transfer from let me put my glass general fund balance of thirty five thousand uh, dollars we fought back and forth and, and uh, on this and, and, and you know my initial feeling I don't want to uh, fool with the fund balance at all uh, and you all know the importance of it but I'm not going to reiterate all that what I will say is that uh, being two professionals the commissioner and I met with the mayor today, and I, I think we've come up with a solution that I know I can live with and, and the uh, commissioner believes he can live with. Look, there was never, ever an idea that we weren't going to get the salt. We always felt that. It was just a matter of where we were going to get it from. I have agreed to go along with, and I'm hoping everyone else will go along with this resolution, the commissioner has agreed that, and he can obviously speak for himself in a second if he chooses to do so, that in the next week or so, 
we will look through the budget. I think I found some area, but obviously I, I, we want to speak with the commissioner to make a transfer within the budget to put the money back in the general fund that we take out tonight, the $35,000 that we take out tonight, so that it really won't be a hit on the general fund. If we can find the funds, I believe they're in there. And once uh, uh, Jacob and I and the mayor look at it, if we come up with that, so I feel comfortable going along with this resolution, and I hope everyone else will also. And, and Jacob, if I misspoke, please. I just sincerely want to thank you for, for, uh, for uh, this support, and uh, we'll do everything we can in the next couple of weeks before the year is over to find fund in my balance to transfer back into. But I appreciate your support and everybody else, should you decide to vote for it. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Alderman Burr. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to thank Maria John for a great night out with the Christmas tree. It was uh, well attended by a lot of people in the community. Between that, the fireworks, night out of the crime that Kate puts on, it shows that the community is coming together with great turnouts for all those uh, events. Uh, and then on the Parks and Rec end, uh, I just uh, appreciate all your support. Chris, you're doing a great job. And we have a couple of resolutions, and we appreciate your support tonight. Thank you. Alderman Regathun. Good evening. I hope everyone had a safe and happy Thanksgiving. Um, I just want to speak briefly on the tree lighting because I thought it was fantastic. We were blessed with perfect weather, and I think it was a great kickoff to the holiday season. Brink went over a number of the uh, holiday events that are coming up, and I, I just I just want to say, for as a mom of four and uh, to the other families in the community, we really have so much to offer uh, your kids, your families, and this entire community. So take a look, come out, and join us, and, and really experience, I think, what we all did at the night of the tree lighting. This is a great place to live. That's all I have tonight. Alderman Johnson. Thank you. I uh, just want to remind you on our Planning and Economic Development Committee, uh, you've all, you're all in receipt of information that was gathered by uh, Mr. Namchuk and Mr. Smith. I hope we will schedule that at the next regular meeting and bring that to some type of closure. Um, obviously, it's a quite intricate story that uh, preceded this decision. I want to thank uh, Legislator Berkman uh, for representing us as he does. I said it before, but I'll say it again because I don't really care. Small cities do heavy lifting, and the county and the state should recognize our residents uh, because we all chip in together with our tax dollars to make it all work. With respect to a cap, it seemed to be the obvious end to the discussion of are you going to raise my taxes every year for the rest of my life? I get that part. Uh, but we also understand that health care in the form of a hospital and schools and government are the major employers in any community, especially a small city and employee benefits drive that engine. So it's not sustainable, as, they've, as we're wont to say at this time, to have all those benefits increase exponentially and to have spending decrease exponentially. And um, the rubber will meet the road eventually, and we'll see how it all turns out. But it's not an easy task, and we employ many of the people who pay the taxes, so it gets to be a very circuitous path that we, that we run around trying to spend our money. Thank you. Thank you. On Witt. Thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank and congratulate those who were involved with uh, putting on that uh, Christmas tree lighting event. It was a wonderful night, and there are, certainly are a lot of pictures around with people with that tree in the background. So, uh, and thank you to the uh, the Levi family for uh, providing that. Thank you. On the Kleiner. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, 60 degrees really helps. Uh, it, it was a great crowd, but mostly, you know, there were so many kids and so many families having fun, and that's what, what's the really great thing to see. Uh, I also want to uh, recognize uh, former Alderman Ed Cummings, Third Ward Alderman, um, for he finally uh, stepped down from his role in helping to bring Santa Claus to the uh, festivities for many, many years. He always did a great job, was very popular. I noticed this year that somehow the Grinch was a lot more popular than Santa Claus. So uh, I see a trend there. I thank the Grinch too. Um, we'll have a uh, combined second, fourth ward 
constituents meeting. That'll be, um, I guess, the Monday before our next council meeting, December 14th. It's now the second Monday of the month. Um, it's only fair that we uh, transfer some money and uh, buy that salt because for years we've been using salt and ice and snow and ice as a slush fund for everything else that needed funding. So I just figure this is just a little payback. Uh, I, I'm sure it'll all work out. Um, we do need we do need someone on the ethics board, Middletown's ethics board, uh, since unfortunate passing of uh, Wiletta Barbie, not been able to meet. Uh, they have still have not gone over this year's st declarations and, and statements of uh, not conflict of interest. And what the ethics board really needs is it needs a city employee to volunteer to be on the ethics board. So if anyone thinks they'd be willing to do that, um, please come forward and contact the mayor or, or barring that any citizen but um, we're required by law to do that if not we should be having the county do it for us so I think we need to step up to the plate and really look hard to try and find someone um, <clears throat> and and finally as always there are still about 10 spots in December that need one person for the warming station to volunteer it's 342, I do know this by heart, 0209, Nancy, 342, no, yeah, 0209. <laughs> um, there's still two training sessions left for volunteers, um, December 3rd this Thursday and December 15th next Tuesday, uh, I mean two week, Tuesday in two weeks for a council meeting. but. Um, it, it's been going well, but it uh, it's really does need volunteers to step up. And it's a great thing that this Interfaith Council and everyone involved does. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman John Francois. Uh, thank you. Uh, what a difference a year made. Uh, last year for the tree uh, lighting, it was so cold out there. I think even the tree wanted to go home afterward. Uh, this year, we actually picked the right time, the right date even the right temperature so kudos to all those that was involved uh the public committee uh, uh, met this evening which resulted into uh informative discussion about traffic concern in the city um more discussion will be uh further discussed thank you thank you alderman summers i'm gonna just reiterate alderman kleiner's announcement for the fourth ward second and fourth ward meetings um D December 14th, Monday, here. Thank you. Thank you. New business. Yeah. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Burr to increase fees of camps implemented by the Middletown Recreation Department to cover rising costs, minimum wage, insurance, and busing of campers. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Burr, seconded by Oldman Witt. <coughs> discussion. Roll. Kleiner. Aye. Witt. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bram Kassoon. Aye. Summers. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr for the Treasurer to transfer a total of $6,700 within the 2015 operating budget of the Middletown Recreation and Parks Department for unused funds in pool repairs to park improvements. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner. Aye. Witt. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Bram Kassoon. Aye. Summers. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Old Moon Ram Kassoon for the treasurer to transfer a total of $3,000 within the Middletown Police Department 2015 budget to cover unexpected shortages for the year. Resolution sponsored by Ram Kassoon, seconded by Old Moon Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution <clears throat> passes. Resolution sponsored by Old Women Summers to apply for county AAA transportation funding for the senior center and for the mayor to sign related documents for the funding. Resolution sponsored by Old Women Summers, second by Old Women Jean Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Burr? 
Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to add two non-voting youth delegate seats to the Middletown Recreation Commission subject to the appointment of the mayor. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Bro. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson for the mayor to sign the workman's compensation contract with Marshall and Sterling for 2016. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Ray Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois for the Treasurer to transfer a total of $2,790.94 within the 2015 budget to cover DPW Commissioner's contractual obligations not budgeted. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. Jean-Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey for the Treasurer to transfer a total of $50,161 within the 2015 budget to cover claims submitted to date and anticipated through the year end. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution <coughs> passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner for the mayor to execute upon Corporation Council review all rental and related agreements for use of the Paramount Theater for the 2016 2017 season. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passed. Resolution sponsored by all the women Summers to authorize the mayor to sign in the assessment collector's warrant for 2016. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Summers, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to approve the 2016 annual budget. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey. Do I have a second? On the record soon. Discussion. Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois for the Treasurer to transfer a total of $35,000 within the DPW 2015 budget to cover the cost of repairs of street decorative lighting. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Ray Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to authorize the mayor to accept the 2016 solutions funding from the Orange County Youth Bureau, Bureau and following approval to sign any and all necessary contracts on behalf of the city of Middletown. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? <coughs> Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by all the women Summers to authorize the treasurer to transfer $1,000 within the Mulberry House Seniors 2015 budget to cover additional expenditures for the remainder of the budget year. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Summers, second by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to approve the selling of 14 to 14 and a half Union Street for a dollar, including demolition in two of the two properties. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Rick Discussion? Roll. 
Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois for the Treasurer to transfer $6,000 within the 2015 DPW budget to cover the cost of repairs to the Water Sewer Department's backhoe. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Bro? Liner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Bram Kazoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois for the Treasurer to transfer from the general fund balance $35,450 for 500 tons of salt at the state bid price of $70.90 per ton to fill the salt barn to full capacity for the coming winter season. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Discussion? Alderman Kleiner. Uh, thank you. I just want to make note, because this does come up, of a provision in the Charter and our Charter, Title V, Section 71A. Uh, this was passed, law was passed in 1945, and, and it kicked in gradually for a five-year, but the end of the five-year period, it says, there shall be included in the annual budget for the cost of removal of snow and ice an amount equal to at least the average of all expenditures for such purpose during each of the five preceding years. Now, I think we've usually done that. I don't think we've ever gone down and, and budgeted less, but it's just something in the budget process that I think we should be aware of. Um, I don't know if it would affect a resolution like this and how much money is actually there for snow and salt and ice, because it includes labor as overtime, et cetera, as well as materials, but um, just so people know where that specific requirement is. Thank you. We have, we understand that. We always use that uh, formula. Okay. Or estimate. Anyone else? Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That is all for new business. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Motion by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Roll. Kleiner? Aye. Witt? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Summers? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Move to adjournment. So moved.